This week marked the 60th year since the Kennedy assassination, and a home movie of the events that day is regarded as the most important record of the president's murder. It was the key evidence that led to the Warren Commission to conclude that Lee Harvey Oswald was the lone shooter. It was taken by Dallas dress manufacturer Abraham Zapruder, who was interviewed by our own Marvin Scott. And Marvin is joining me here today to talk more about this. Hi, Marvin. What a story. Well, you know, Dan, the museum has told me they learned more about Abraham Zapruder from my 22-minute radio interview than anything he told the Warren Commission or anyone else. His name is now forever embedded in the American history. The irony, though, of it all, Zapruder told me he actually forgot to bring his camera that day to film the president he loved. But it turned out to be one of the nation's darkest moments. I didn't have the pictures at all if it wasn't for my secretary, Mrs. Rogers, who made me go home and get the camera. I didn't have a camera with me at all that morning. And uh, she insisted I go home and get the camera. The images he recorded are seared in America's collective consciousness, whether you lived through it at the time or one of the millions who have been born since. The visual images of a young president being brutally murdered endured as a deeply personal experience. With his 8mm camera in hand, Zapruder checked out three spots before finally positioning himself at the lower left corner of this grassy knoll in front of the Texas School Book Depository Building. It was a perfect vantage point to film the president's motorcade. His narration is added from a portion of the interview I did with him in 1966. The images are extremely graphic. I saw the motorcycles. Then the car approached, and uh, Jacqueline and the president were waving. And as he came in line with my camera, I heard a shot. I saw the president lean over to Jacqueline. Then the second shot came. And then I realized I saw his head open up, and I started yelling. They killed him. They killed him. And I continued shooting until he went under the underpass. The film runs 26.6 seconds, but over the years it has gone through thousands of hours of frame-by-frame -frame scrutiny. It was the centerpiece of every official investigation. The Warren Commission ruled on it in reaching the conclusion that Lee Harvey Oswald acted alone, but the film also fueled many of the conspiracy theories. In 1979, a congressional committee established to reinvestigate the assassination concluded that there was, quote, probably a second gunman who shot from the grassy knoll, just adjacent to where Zapruder was standing when he shot the film. But Zapruder told me he did not hear a second gunman. Do you feel the shots perhaps came from behind the fence or behind you on the grassy knoll? No, as a matter of fact, I heard some... Uh comments about us, and I went back to the place where I stood when I shot these pictures and looked to that uh, wooden fence that we're talking about. I believe it's about between 30 or 35 feet away from where I was standing. I believe I would have heard different sound, a shot coming from my, uh, coming from my right ear. Zapruder's camera is now in the National Archives. A new camera Bell and Howell sent him was never used. He told me he could never again put his eye to the viewfinder because it rekindled all the images of that awful day in Dallas. In 1999, the government paid the Zapruder family $16 million for the original 8mm film, a record for a historical artifact. It is now preserved in the National Archives. Abraham Zapruder died in 1970, a quiet, unassuming man who never expected to be immortalized a horrible moment in history. His images have now frozen in time, Dan. Fascinating that he wouldn't pick up a camera after that incident, Marvin. You know, Zapruder only did a handful of interviews in his lifetime, one of the most sought after people to do an interview with, and you got him. How did you get that interview? <laughs> to take the quote from his granddaughter's book, 26 Seconds, cajoled, pleaded, mm. and used good old fashioned charm. Yeah. He did not do interviews. He was a very private man, and I engaged in conversation with him. I knew he lived in Brooklyn until the age of 15. I'm a kid from the Bronx. Right. We bonded talking about New York. And after 15, 20 minutes, he said, can you be here at 2 o'clock? There you go. And, you and once I right got over. there, I convinced him to come down to the very spot where he stood when he took the Wow, film. incredible. But the narration now over the video from the interview, how did that whole thing come about? 
very carefully yeah. edited 26.6 seconds of the film. My audio portion around 33 wow. something seconds. A nip and tuck here brought it down to 26.6 seconds. Yeah. And it took about 40 years to finally get hold of it, get the rights to use the film right. from the Sixth Floor Museum. And now my original cassette recording is, I've donated that to the museum. It's part of the permanent art assassination archive. Incredible, Marvin. 60 years later, though, there is still likely something we don't know. There are sealed documents to this very day. What do we think are in those sealed documents? I feel like you know everything. Well, I wish I had the answer to that. <laughs> but in 1992, the government mandated that everything had to be released. Right. President Trump in 2017 released many documents, mm -hmm. but he withheld some. Some are redacted. President Biden has released some. He's still withholding some. About 5 million pages have been so far released. 97 or 98 percent of the material has been released. But what's in those other documents? I believe the FBI and the CIA are pressuring the presidents mm -hmm. to withhold information because there's information in there about perhaps informants, agents, mm -hmm things that concern national security. Ah. And we won't have a full picture until the government is fully transparent and we right. see all those documents. I'll never forget, Earl Warren said something after the release of the Warren Commission report. Right. He said, there are some things in our lifetime we will never know about the assassination. Yeah. And 60 years is almost a lifetime. Seriously. Uh, Marvin, fascinating. Thank you for being on the show to talk about this. Thank you. Dan. You're on the front seat of so <laughs> many of the big stories. That's just one of many that Marvin has covered over your career. Incredible.